you. Molly Scott Cato. Thank you, Chair, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to our committee, Commissioner Vestager. You may by now recognize me as the MEP for South West England, where the decision on Hinckley was taken, which I obviously did not agree with. Um, and I've got some questions for you today about the renewable industry in, in my country. Um, I understand, of course, that the choice of energy mix is for national governments, but there's a great deal of concern in the UK at the moment that the new government we have is actually actively opposed to the renewables industry and that this will cause us to, to fail to meet our mandatory targets for carbon reductions. As a recent example, the government decided in a budget last week that the climate change levy would now be charged on renewables, which we find completely illogical, but I'd also ask you whether you think that is an example of unfair competition. In the case of the Southwest, we have recently released a report showing that actually renewables generate far more jobs um, per kilowatt hour and also create a lot more value for the local economy. But nonetheless, whatever happens with the legal case, Hinkley is already having a chilling effect on renewables. Hinkley is taking up the vast amount of grid capacity, new grid capacity for the next three to six years that will not be available for renewable suppliers. To me, that seems like an example of lack of fair competition. There's also a question around who actually pays for the grid connection for renewables compared to who pays for it for Hinkley. Um, so, I mean, uh, generally, what I'd like to ask is, at what stage does it become a concern that actually a government is so committed to a certain type of energy that it becomes a question of competition, regardless of the member state's freedom to choose its own energy mix? Because the feeling in my part of the world is that the government is actually deliberately skewing the playing field against renewable generators. Thank you very much. I think it's... It's, it's very difficult for, for me to give a precise answer um, because it would take uh, the effort actually to look into the concrete decisions uh, being taken uh, when uh, support schemes are being uh, changed in order to evaluate if they are changed in a way that uh, uh, changes the competitive field or if it's done in a way that actually uh, uh, enables um, I think that, well, in, in general, what we're trying to do is, of course, to, to minimize state aid uh, as much as possible. And, and as far as I have learned, because I was not there when the Hinkley Point decision was, uh, was taken, that was the, the very long and ongoing process. It was to make sure that there was no overcompensation, that the cost of the taxpayers was minimized as much as possible. Uh, I cannot say at, at this point of time how that affects sort of the, the future development of the entire uh, energy system in, in the UK. Uh, my guess would be that if there are uh, profound changes in the support schemes, for instance of renewables, then the UK government would, would uh, turn to, to the Commission uh, in order to get uh, a, a new evaluation of, uh, of how that's actually uh, going to work. Uh, I think part of the debate has to, to respect that not only has the member state the freedom to choose the energy mix, but that also um, means that one has to accept some of the changes that follows uh, of those decisions. Uh, and that, of course, point the finger to the fact that this is real politics, because it's not just a decision about uh, the energy mix, it's also what comes uh, then in the future when it comes to, to, to balancing uh, and developing a diverse uh, system as such. But I'll be happy to, to come back to the issue at a later stage. 